Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening. Um, I am going to explain module one, and this time you're going to get to see me in the corner with my slides. So you're going to have to let me know if that's distracting or not. So let me get going to share the screen. And we will do this. I won't be able to see myself, so <laughs> hopefully. All right, welcome to module one. You're in your first week here of Getting Naked Again Rocks, and I hope that this, um, this information will serve you well. I'm very excited to share with you um, this module because it's mostly about mindset. Um, mindset is truly the cornerstone of this program. If, you, um, if we can't get your mindset to work or in the proper frame of mind, um, you will experience frustration and failure. So it's the foundation to make a lasting change. And that's what we want is a lasting change. Um, it's sort of magical almost, and I've been working on it myself for the last, um, uh, since really since January, I have been digging deep into my own mindset and I've seen a transformation in my physical body, in my attitude, in my tolerance level for, um, others and setting boundaries. Um, I'm more compassionate to myself. And I've almost created sort of a heaven here on earth um, that's it's hard to explain, but it just really sets you up for success um, to get this mindset right. And I have so much to share with you, but we'll just kind of um, start out slow and skim the surface here in this module one. Uh, let's go into what we're going to cover today. Oh, first the quote to change your life. You have to change yourself. To change yourself, you have to change your mindset. And it is so true. Let's go in today. We'll cover, uh, we'll talk a little bit about manifesting your mindset and eradicating toxic thinking. Um, we're going to go give you, I'm going to give you a tool um, entitled Disciplined Imagination that um, I hope isn't too woo woo for you, but it really does is effective. Um, you get to create your own affirmations in this module. And I'm going to touch on journaling. Um, just touch on it this module. We'll, we'll sort of dig maybe a little deeper into it later in the 12 week program. And then I will give you um, three ac action items to do to really start uh, the concrete part of this program is the diet and exercise part. Um, actually, this is just the diet part. So um, I won't skip that. All right. So manifest a new mindset. Um, every thought we think becomes our future. And that's from Louise Hay. And it's so true. I really um, didn't realize how true this all was until I dug a little deeper and practiced it myself. Uh, let me explain to you a little bit about the mind. You have two levels of your mind, the conscious level and the subconscious level. Um, the conscious level is where decisions are made, um, where you, the, your rational mind is going. Um, the subconscious mind is irrational and it's it's things you don't even think about, like your digestion, your circulation, your heart is beating. You don't think about those things, but your subconscious mind keeps them going. So um, any habitual thought that you have in your conscious mind gets sunk down to that subconscious level. And your subconscious level does not distinguish whether those thoughts are true, false, rational, irrational. The subconscious mind just believes that it is true, and then it will set in motion um, those, it'll make, it'll make whatever those thoughts are come true. The subconscious mind accepts the idea as true, and then will execute it to make it happen. An example that's not diet exercise related is if you're constantly saying, I'm broke, 
we don't have enough money to afford this. I'm always broke. We're, we're always um, lacking. We're short of money always. That may be partially true, um, but it, it could be a bit irrational. Your subconscious doesn't know the difference. So it will execute that as fact. And you will always experience lack. You'll always experience not having enough. So that's how um, important the mindset and the subconscious works. So um, let's move on. I want to make sure we're going to go right into the toxic thinking. Yes, that's what I thought was next. Okay. So um, we all have, we all talk to ourselves in your mind. We have thousands of thoughts that you say to yourself or even out loud in the mirror every day. And you may not even be aware of how and what you're saying to yourself. Um, I don't know about you, but I uh, used to always look in the mirror and say, look at my wrinkles. I'm getting old. My hair is thinning. Um, just a lot of negative self-talk. And uh, I was told to become aware of it. And I was not a very nice person to myself. Um, and, you know, you kind of have to think of it as, would you treat your best friend like you treat yourself? And you'd ne you wouldn't. You wouldn't even treat an enemy, <laughs> someone you didn't like, sometimes the way that you talk to yourself. So um, the first step really in kind of um, changing this negative self-talk is just becoming an aware of it. And as you can see on the screen here, I have four different kind of types of negative self-talk. And the first one is um, filtering. Um, and a good example of filtering is um, it's sort of, you filter out the bad, or you filter out the good of your thought, and you only concentrate on the bad. For instance, if you say something like, um, okay, so I, um, this week I didn't exercise uh, I only exercised twice, so therefore, I am just gonna. I, this isn't this whole exercise program isn't for me. I'm gonna quit. And instead, you actually did exercise a couple of times that week, and it's it's okay. You can keep going. So it's kind of you're just filtering out the good parts. So that's one type. Another one is shooting yourself. Um, how many of us should all over ourselves? You know, you uh, say the words should, have to, um, ought to, you know, um, you know, I should, I should exercise every day. Well, that's irrational. You, you probably realistically um, can only exercise <clears throat> five times a week or I shouldn't eat, eat past 8 p.m. Well, is that rational? Because no, you most likely will sometime eat past 8 p.m. Um, another example then really quick is overgeneralizing. That is when we you use words like never and always, like I never eat breakfast. So your subconscious mind will start believing that and you just you just won't. You're, it will make it happen. You won't eat breakfast or uh, uh, I always eat ice cream every night. Um, and, you know, maybe that's true, but let's not say always and never. Try to avoid that. Um, the last one, all or nothing thinking. Oh, this is kind of like black and white thinking. Uh, um, I'm trying to think of another example than what I have in the workbook. Um, something like if I, if I don't receive results in seven days, then this program must not work for me, so I'm just not gonna do it. Um, and so those are just some types that you wanna look out for. But um, what you want to do with the negative self-talk is replace, write these down, write these thoughts down and replace them with positive thoughts. For example, uh, for me, for my example, if I look in the mirror and say, oh, I'm, uh, my hair is thinning, you know, I, I'll change it to, I am 
I am so happy with the hair I have. I'm going to take care of it and um, work to make it healthy. This is true. This is exactly true. I, I did replace those negative ones with positive ones. And in reality, I, I feel like my hair is getting more healthy and, and thicker. I took some action steps as well. But it all starts with thought. That's biblical, right? It starts with a thought. All right. Uh, so catch yourself in your negative thoughts, become aware of it, stop, rethink. And, um, you know, I used to think deprecating humor was funny and great and good and everyone liked it, but really I was not doing myself any good deeds. So, all right, let's move on <clears throat> to the other portion of this is um, disciplined imagination and um, the quote here is from Wayne Dyer, the only limits you have are the limits you believe. And this is really a belief system. What you believe will come true. I know that sounds maybe far-fetched or uh, maybe you don't quite believe it, but it is so true. You have to believe in your heart and your mind and your soul that you will be successful. This can be translated to other parts of your life as well. Um, there are two principal reasons for failure when starting a new program. And that one is lack of confidence. And the other one is um, too much effort. Doing like you just have to do too much. You can't sus sus sustain, Ooh, can't say that word, uh, sustain what you're doing. And um, so, uh, let's go let me go into what those two mean so lack of confidence if you just intend to lose weight or if you hope to have more energy and get fit um that's lack of confidence instead you want to know that you're going to lose weight know that you're going to have more energy at the end of this program believe it in your mind and your heart that you are going to be successful. Um, the other part is the too much effort. I want this transformation to be easy for you and not forced upon you. Um, as we go through, I'm going to, I'm going to throw a lot of tools and ideas at you over the next 12 weeks. You will not like some of them. And so you don't have to do them. Um, I want you to pick you know, choose, choose what works for you. Um, if something doesn't work for you, tell me about it. And we're going to find another, another way that works for you. Um, but if you are working so hard at things you don't want to do or don't like, it's too much effort. You're not going to stick with it. You're not going to stay with it and it'll be too much effort. So I want you to, to, in this program, do not do in order to get, just do and trust the process and know the end results. Know that you're going to succeed. Leave the details to me. I will tell you what the next steps are, but just go with the flow and know that your life is unfolding as it's supposed to. All right, so um, there are, uh, I gave steps of how to do this disciplined imagination in your workbook. And, um, you know, you want to start with just being relaxed. Um, uh, just, you know, go through the whole, all of your body and just relax and say to yourself things like, I am at my ideal weight. I, I lost the weight. L losing the weight came easy to me. Whatever, go back to your goals that you made in the last, in the welcome packet and say things like, I give thanks for the weight I've lost. I give thanks for the energy I now have. Uh, whatever your goals were, say those to yourselves as if they happened already. And in the present moment, you are experiencing those successes. Um, and then, um, in addition, you want to do that about five minutes a day, kind of as in your meditation times. Um, and then just before going to bed, I want you to imagine a friend of yours or your, your partner, your uh, mother, father, um, saying to you, wow, 
how did you lose all that weight? Wow, you look great. Your hair's thicker, your skin is radiating, radiating, radiant, whatever. Um, and really imagine it as if it is really happened. What are they wearing? What, are, what does their voice sound like? Where are you when they're saying this to you? What are you wearing? Can you touch them? Uh, reach out and touch them. Reach out and give them a hug. What do you say back to them? Thank you. I know. I worked hard. I did this. Um, and I know you may think, oh, this has nothing to do with losing weight. I just want to get to the exercise and nutrition part. It, it has everything to do. The, the exercise and nutrition part will not work if you don't believe that it's going to happen for you. So this is how important it is. And I want to drill that home. And when you're not experiencing success, I will have you go back to these, these um, mindset issues. All right, uh, just a few more things here. Um, affirmations, you're gonna get to choose your own belief system. And uh, there are a few kind of guidelines that you'll want to follow. Um, but first, let me back up to how about saying it 108 times. You know, I had a friend give me a rosary necklace and it held, it has uh, 108 beads on it. She's the one that told me all about the affirmations. And um, so I, um, in part of my meditations, I just, I hold the beads and I say my affirmations as I hold each, you know, I touch each bead and it's 108 times. And I, I have done this since January. And it really gets that conscious mind thinking sinks down to the subconscious mind. Now, of course, you don't, you don't have to do it like that. You can say it um, a couple of times every hour, um, just as long as you're really getting those, those I am statements in um, and believing that they're true, saying it with meaning. Um, you'll want to use present tense. Um, uh, choose your own wording though, whatever you, whatever feels good to you. And, um, you know, I, mine are, I am competent. I am empowered. I am enough. Um, I am beautiful. I am sexy. I am healthy. I am fit. Uh, I am smart. That was, that was one for me that I really had to, uh, work on believing. Uh, I know I was but I, I just still had to work on that. So choose your own affirmations, write them down, memorize them. You'll find this to be a nice experience. All right, again, we're just gonna touch on journaling. Um, I have journaled uh, since 2007. I have um, journaled pretty regularly, but my journaling back in 2007 was not quality journaling. It really didn't serve me well. It was just more of a complaint mode. And since, since then, I've uh, became more of a quality journaler, and it really sets your intention for the day. Um, um, as you can see, it increases your emotional intelligence, it improves your self-confidence, boosts your vocabulary. Okay, I'm not sure about that. I don't really look up words. <laughs> um, it evokes mindfulness. Uh, assists in achieving your goals. That is so true uh, when you set your intentions for the day. Um, it enhances your memory and comprehension because you're writing them down. Um, I think I said the act of writing your thoughts and your dreams down has been scientifically proven to uh, help you and benefit you in these ways. Um, it strengthens your self-discipline because you've written it down. You've, it's kind of like a promise you've made to yourself. Um, it lowers anxiety. Certainly for me, that works. Um, induces better sleep and sparks creativity. Creativity. We all need creativity in our lives. And if you're not getting that, journaling is one way to um, get that. So let's talk about a little quality journaling, what, what to do. Now, this is what I do. Um, of course, you feel free to write about whatever you want. But um, I always write uh, three or four things I'm grateful for. And one of them is always something very 
subtle, very small. Like I'm thankful for the rain. Or I'm thankful for the ceiling fan uh, <laughs> cooling me off here this summer. Um, I also write big things I'm grateful for, um, like you all. Um, you also, I also write, I think about the day before and think of the positive things that happened. And it could be small things like I, a smile from a stranger um, or uh, just I completed grocery shopping and got all the groceries away. <laughs> or I, this, I put away the clothes of the laundry I did and it actually got put away and that's a big positive. So it can be really anything, but just starting to focus on the gratefulness and the positive. Um, and then I always write about what would make today great. To this morning, I wrote um, two things that I wanted to record this, um, module one, and also get ready for my first group call. And I'm, I've already done the first one, and I'm doing the second one now. So I feel like, you know, I wrote it down. It's a promise I made to myself. And then, you know, your relationship with yourself. This goes back to that negative thinking and being compassionate with yourself. But, you know, it's, Write it down. Way to go, Ange. Make today great. Have a good day, Ange. I love you. Um, just try it and let me know. Give me some feedback on what you think about that. All right, let's move on. All right, we're going to go right into your healthy kickstart because I know a lot of you want to are action oriented. We're going to go over the rule of twos, the sipping solution, and lemon water. So, this is just the start of things I want you to be aware of. All right, so the rule of twos is eat twice as often, uh, eat half as much, and chew twice as long. So, let's uh, go right into the first one, eat twice as often. So this is also known as grazing. Um, eating more often every three, I wouldn't say every two hours, more like every three hours or so. Um, but you just, it keeps your insulin levels stable as well as your hormone levels stable. So it's very important to not let yourself get too hungry because, of course, lots can happen when you get hungry. You start, you'll just devour that leftover pizza. Um, when you do this, when you eat twice as often, I promise you, you will automatically eat half as much. Um, um, it may not be the first few days because you just are trying to get into the swing of things, but as you eat twice as often, you will become, you'll be fuller faster. You're, um, you will be intaking nutrients and your body will start trusting you. Um, so many of my clients in the past skip meals to save calories and think they're losing weight. And what happens is your body starts not trusting you. Your body says, oh, you know, I haven't eaten in 12 hours because they usually skip breakfast. So I need to hang on to these nutrients that she gave me 12 hours ago and store them in the fat cells because I might need them for later if, if I'm going to be starved. This is what your body thinks. So as you start feeding your body, she will start trusting you and then she will start letting those nutrients move through you. You'll eliminate more often. And um, you'll just, your body will start trusting you. So it will, it will work. You have to trust me on this. The last one, two twice as long. I'm still working on this. I, I'm, because I'm aware of it, I realize when I take a bite, I chew. And sometimes before I even swallow, I've got the next bite in my mouth. So it's just something to really concentrate on. And um, mindful eating is what it boils down to. And instead of in front of the TV, sit at the table and just be very mindful of your uh, each bite and enjoy each bite. All right, the next one is the sipping solution. I promise you this alone has made a huge difference for me. Um, once I started incorporating this sipping solution in my diet, I I feel like I'm a little more in control of my eating and when I go out to lunches and go out to eat and have big weekends, this is what I come back to to kind of get myself back on track. So I wanted to share this one right away for you. Um, 
what is a sipping solution? They're smoothies basically, or juicing. Now you don't have to have a juicer, uh, just a simple blender will do. But this is a nutrient dense drink that fuels your body and your mind for the whole day. It's a great way to start. I have mine here, my orange sickle one here that I'm drinking right now. Um, um, also, when you drink some of your meals, um, it improves the absorption of the vitamins and minerals and you'll actually poop more. <laughs> it's a natural laxative. Um, if you are, um, if you are constipated at all, this alone will help because if you think about it, your body has less to break down. And so it just moves through your body a little bit more. And believe it or not, later on in the program, we will be talking about your eliminations and poops. I know, awkward, uncomfortable, but it's got to be done. It's important. Um, also, it will boost your immunity and it helps with weight control. It truly does. So I've included some recipes, some of my favorites. If you don't like the, any of those, um, let me know. I have a bunch. I have become the smoothie queen. Um, and one thing I tell you to do is just to have a smoothie four or five times in the week for breakfast and your mid-morning snack, and then eat a sensible lunch and a sensible dinner, of course. Um, but just that alone will really help kickstart your health. All right, I'll give you some examples of some snacks and things too. All right, all right. So let's move on to the last one is lemon water. Um, now, my habit, um, I still have a cup of coffee in the morning. Uh, that's just, can't quite give that up yet. Um, and there's nothing wrong with coffee, so I don't mean to say it that way. Um, but my second cup, is a lemon water and I explain how I do it in the workbook and it satisfies me enough to where I don't need that second cup of coffee. So I would like to hear from you to see how um, adding this habit um, helps your coffee or um, caffeinated beverage in the morning. And maybe you don't even do that, but this is such an important step. Um, to add lemon water because it really cleanses out your digestive system. Um, again, right here, it promotes hydration. Uh, the days I do lemon water, which is almost every day, I uh, am peeing all the time. Um, of course, it's a good source of vitamin C. It improves your skin quality, supports weight loss, um, aids in digestion, as I said before. It says it freshens breath. I'm not sure about that. I guess I have to ask my husband um, and prevents kidney stones. No one wants that. So just a few things to start incorporating here this next week. And um, I hope that you enjoy that. And I'm going to just end with this quote from Alice in Wonderland. Alice says, this is impossible. And the Mad Hatter says, only if you believe it is. Um, and it's so true. Believe in yourself be compassionate with yourself and well here's to your health all right have a good week <laughs>